So I actually really just stole the battery out of a Game Boy cartridge and glued it on here. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this one we will take a look at the most cursed notebook you have ever seen. And we will install macOS on it, of course. So let's get started. So what we have here are the remains of a notebook I found smashed to bits on the ground. And almost everything you will see in today's video was once in a recycling bin, is from the trash or has been found on the ground. So we are literally going to create a Hackintosh made from trash, which I will call the Trashintosh. So what we have here is a Samsung V25, which is approximately from 2004 or 2005. I'm not sure on the exact date. Since I found this notebook smashed to bits a few years ago, I just put everything in this box and let it sit here because I thought at some point in time I will just restore it and maybe make a video about it. I never did that. So now let's revisit this notebook. I don't even know if it actually still works. I think it turned on back in the day and um, maybe we can install macOS on it. Who knows? So I don't think we, we actually need the case. I mean, what we really want is just the main board. I also have the, the keyboard here. That, all that stuff, it's, it's trash, the screen is broken. Let's, let's just throw that stuff away. So now, this is the meat and potatoes, as we like to call it, of our Samsung V25. Sadly, it came without RAM, so I added a 256 megabyte DDR SD RAM module here, which is actually less than it originally had. According to Google, it had 512 megabytes. There's also a PCMCIA slot. Now where the fun begins is with the modifications. To get this notebook working back in the day, uh, I did not have the right power supply for it because, like I said, I found it on the ground. Uh, there was no power supply. So what I did, I had a, another uh, notebook power supply. Um, I just jammed some wires in it, glued it together with scotch tape and then soldered these to the contacts on the jacks here. And because I was tinkering with the device and wanted to easily shut the device down and reboot and, and stuff like that, I also added a switch here, which just cuts power. So there's like a physical switch soldered to the main board here, as you can see, that handles power. Now, what I also did, because the device was complaining about a missing CMOS battery, I actually had the right plug for the CMOS battery in my, uh, in my parts bin. So I just stole the battery out of a Game Boy cartridge and glued it on here. And it works. The CPU has been repasted, but I actually was too lazy to put all the screws on it. So there's that. We have IDE for the pin here, notebook IDE. Um, apparently, I, I think it should work. There is also the connector for a DVD drive or CD drive, which is broken. I am not sure if we can get that actually working again. We also have VGA. We have a parallel port to USB, but it's 1.0, uh, 1.1. I put my uh, wireless mouse dongle in here. We have FireWire, Ethernet, modem, and a PS2, PS2 port. So yeah, that's, that's all the specs we will be working with today. And first of all, I need to connect a monitor to this. So I actually have no way to capture VGA and this device only has VGA. Uh, so what I will do is I will film the screen um, from a external monitor and use that. So my idea was to somehow get this cable through my little cardboard box here. Almost cut myself, nice. Just like this. Now I have 
a cable in here because the whole thing is super dirty I don't want this thing on my table so it will have to stay in this box and if I'm fed up with it I can just throw that stuff out um, so yeah that's that's the spirit of today's video now let's see here we have the VGA port and yes my cable is long enough that's great okay so we have VGA I have my mouse connected and I have power connected so we could try to see if we can actually power this bad boy on I think the power button was this one so let's turn it on and see what happens oh nothing happens because <laughs> I need to first um, start our power here and as we can see an LED here got green which means we have power and now I can press the power button and nothing happens. Ah, something happened. Yes, we have a Samsung logo. Okay. So the device seems to be at least somewhat working. I don't know if it tries to boot now. Okay, operating system not found. That is quite logical because there is no storage medium here. So, let's change that. My first idea is to boot a Linux. So we know what hardware we are actually working with here. Because for example, I have no idea what processor this is. The BIOS says it's a 2 GHz Celeron, but I don't know which one. So let's try that. I don't think we can boot from USB sticks on a notebook this old, but I will try it because that would be the easiest method. 15 minutes later. So I installed our Antix Linux from the Apple TV video on my USB stick here. And let's see if we can actually boot that. Okay. The fans spun up. Ah, the flash drive lit up. And the fans spun up. Nice. It's blinking. It's blinking. Okay, it looks like we are searching for an operating system. Oh, but the USB stick stopped blinking. That is not good. But, I mean, let's be honest, booting from USB was not really that common of a feature for a device from that time period. Even having USB ports was not that common. So let's try something else. Let's try a physical disk because as we have seen on the back side here, which I can now not rotate, which is great. Ah no, I, I, I can rotate. It's, it's, everything is okay. Here we have the connector for an internal DVD drive or CD drive. And I also actually got an internal CD drive or this one is actually a DVD, a DVD drive from some old HP notebook I had laying around. So my idea would be to try this one out and see if it works. But I also need an operating system to boot. So look what I found in the archives. We have Ubuntu 10.4 LTS 32-bit and we have Ubuntu 11.4 LTS and both of them are from a German computer magazine from back in the day which I used to read and they are actually uh, DVDs you can flip around. So there's 32-bit on one side and 64-bit on the other side. So let's just try the newer one and see if we can get that to boot. 
or first let's see if we can even connect our drive here. I will put the CD sleeve in here because first off why not and second because I don't want the drive to short out uh, any components. Okay, so the drive is mounted. Let's turn our monstrosity back over and try to boot from that disk. Power would be kind of great. The drive seems to spin up. Oh, no operating system found. The drive also did not show up on the post screen there. Sadly, I don't have another drive because I think the problem with this drive is that it is a DVD drive. So it's probably too new for this device. And I don't have another drive with uh, the old style connector here. So what else could we do? Ah, I have an idea. We have here a PCMCIA slot and I own a Sony PCMCIA to CD drive. This will of course not work with our DVD, but there are some small Linux distros that still fit on a CD. So let's see if we can even power this up or if this is actually just for Sony devices. Let's put this here and plug this guy in. Okay, so I mean, this, this looks great, just look at it. Let's try to power it on. We had the blinking lights, fan is turning on, we have a post screen. <sighs> but I see no light from our drive here. And I also can't eject the mechanism. And I know this drive is working because I tried it on the uh, Sony X505 from the last video. Yeah, and we have a no operating system message. Bummer. Okay. But we will just get another drive. I won't give up that easy. So here we have another drive I found in the trash. Um, this is also super weird because it looks like a notebook drive from, from the form factor here, but it actually terminates in a mini USB plug, which is something I have not seen before. But it does actually work as an external drive, or at least on my modern PC it does. It's also a DVD drive. So let's see if we can plug this in to the USB and make it work. Ah, oh, that was bad. <laughs> I shorted the contacts from our battery. Oh, okay, it, it, it's still working. Everything is fine. Okay, the thing is, I did not hear anything from our drive here. Man, why is none of that stuff working? Does it get power? Oh, yes, yeah, it gets power, okay. So, where did I put our... Where did I put the DVD? Oh no, I left the DVD in the drive. Okay, let's let's try the other one. So here we have 10.4 32-bit. We might need to reboot for that to be seen. Yeah, and this is why I added this super nice switch here so I can easily reboot the machine. Trust me, I'm an engineer. 
I heard some sounds from our drive. Yep, it's making noise. We have a post screen. But it's not spinning up. Yeah, it does not look like it's working. Man, why? <laughs> why can't we get this notebook booted from something? Okay, I have one last idea. It's absolutely ridiculous, but it might just work. Hear me out on this one. We remove, or we power this thing off. Oh, no, 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 we need our disk. I'm not making the same mistake twice. Give me back my disk. Okay, so. Thanks for that. Okay, so. I've rigged something up. And what I got is this DVD drive from an old PC of mine. As you can see, it's a full-size PC drive. And you're now probably asking yourself, how the hell are we going to connect that to this notebook? So hear me out on this one. I got an ATX power supply because why the hell not? Which I will put to the side somewhere here. And I've got the ATX power cable. Let's, let's make a cut out in our uh, wonderful high quality case here, also known as cardboard. So now we have power. What we don't have is data and for this I will first add a SATA cable, which is to be expected. I mean, what else would you connect here? And that SATA cable goes into a SATA to USB converter, which we can put here. And that ends in USB which we can now plug into our notebook. And I have no idea if this even, I'm, I, I'm speechless. It, we are just too far gone here. Um, but I actually think this might work. I honestly think this could work. So we need a bit of insulation here again. Let's add this, put this guy on top. And I think we're ready to see if we can boot. I will turn on the ATX power supply. Interestingly, nothing happened. Ah, I forgot to short the two pins. Classic. To turn a ATX power supply on, you have to short uh, two pins. I'm not sure if we can see this. Sadly, the cable is not long enough. Um, I will use a paper clip to short the green pin, which is the sense pin for power with, ah, let's get this out of here. So green to ground, which will then act like a power button in a PC and turn our guy on and as you maybe heard the drive has power <laughs> okay so uh, apparently there was a, a disk still in there and now we can put our ubuntu 10.14 disk in here And we can try to boot again. I don't hear anything spin up. Oh! <laughs> it's actually spinning up and it's moving. It's moving. It's alive. 
Okay, we're booting Ubuntu. Um, I would need to connect the keyboard here. Okay, so that does not seem to work. So as you can see, it's quite a bit later on the day. I tried many more disks and actually couldn't get any Linux distribution to boot on here, at least not from a CD. So the idea of this video was to install macOS on this piece of garbage here, which is quite hard if I don't know what hardware is actually on this board. Without Linux, I don't know that. So I have one more idea of how to get macOS onto this and you may have already guessed it. It is the dead Moo image again. I used it in the last video to install macOS Tiger on the Sony VAIO X505 and I will try to use it again to install macOS onto this pile of garbage here. The problem is, as you have already seen, we don't have a hard drive here and apparently we can't boot from the USB. So what I'm trying to do instead is use a weird adapter again to get a SSD actually <laughs> to connect to this board. So what I found in my parts bin is this super dusty old adapter for a MacBook from 2006 I think which adapts this CD drive port here to SATA as you can see here. So using that I can put a old SSD I had laying around into the adapter, put this bracket here to hold it in and then I can connect this where we connected the disk drive before. So let me do that. Since I don't want to have any shorts I'm using the CD envelope here again. So let's take some scotch tape to glue this here in. And here as well. And now put the board back in our, let's call it case. So on the SSD, is now an image of the dead Moo installation. And now I will power the notebook on and we can see if this is bootable and we can finally have macOS on this piece of trash here. We have the boot screen. Yes. Okay, so what we have here is now the bootloader and just like last time, we have to add our boot arguments. I know that this hardware will probably not start without the save mode, especially since we don't know what, what hardware we actually have here. So we can't enable and disable kexts or add and remove kexts uh, according to the uh, built-in hardware. So I will just use the save mode. Let's see. Yes. So we have a macOS Tiger login prompt. Let's try our password. Govinity. <laughs> and we are on the desktop. <laughs> Finally, after a whole day of messing around with old Linux distributions and weird ways to connect disk drives to this main board, we finally have macOS. Okay, so let's turn on the magnification effect of the dock. I always love this in macOS. 
Whee! <laughs> That's nice. Although there are some artifacts. And it's weirdly stretched. Also the dashboard is stretched. And super slow. Interestingly, it's even slower than on the Sony. Let's look in about this Mac, what it says. Okay, 1.99 gigahertz. And it's also full of artifacts. Yeah, and there's our 256 megabytes of RAM. Here we can see our SSD connected to the ATA bus. So it's actually connected to the IDE bus, not SATA. Here we can see that our GPU is not supported, which we already knew. Yeah, the last thing is let's have a look in the screensavers, because there is my favorite screensaver. Let's go to the, yeah, here it is, the flurry screensaver. It probably does not look good on the screen capture and actually it does not look good in real life because it's like two frames per second or even less. But this screensaver, I, I love it. It always looked great. So yeah, there we have it. We installed macOS on this absolute pile of garbage here. And it worked. It took some effort, but in the end it worked, which is just great. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And if you want to see more shenanigans like this, consider subscribing. Give it a thumbs up if you liked the video and I'll see you next time.